So the Philippines wins Miss Universe um, contender Pia Alonza Versbach. Um, she's a Filipino German actress. Um, won't go too much into her herself. Um, there's obviously getting a, there's a lot of media coverage on this at the moment because they managed to mess up the um, giving the title to the wrong person with the runner up. They got them back to front. Um, what I find quite funny is the brutality of people online. But this is the bit I want to discuss. Pageants in the Philippines are huge. I mean, every every um, sort of fiesta or something has one. You have gay pageants, you have um, team pageants, you have pageants for everything. Um, and I'm not sure why it's so big. It's part of the like sort of pop culture. It's ridiculously huge. And I'm not sure if it's even financial gain because a lot of these are not making any money. Um, what you have is obviously a local pageant has just got a bit of money that's been whipped up around the barangay to get people who compete in it. Do they make a lot of money? The answer is no. Um, do you make a lot of money when you get to the top of the game? The answer is yes because obviously you get all the endorsement stuff and promoting other bits and pieces, all the fashion type stuff and the uh, weight loss products, all that, you know, everything that's tied in with the beauty industry. So at the top there is money to be made, some serious money. But just generally pageants are everywhere. I mean I know a lot of people that actually compete in pageants. Straight, gay, all sorts. It's like I mean I did a video a while back um of a pretending to be gay pageant where it was straight guys dressing up as transgender people and having a pageant. Now, I don't even know where the idea comes from for that sort of event in a official capacity in the barangay because it's actually a um, part of the fiesta celebrations with the barangay. You just saw, like, you know, when I first went, I'm not sure if people were gay or what because I'm like, these are some of the worst gay people I've seen. It's obviously why, because they weren't, they were straight. But pageants are huge in the Philippines. Um, You'll see them in the malls. They'll have pageants for pageants, fashion shows, and stuff like that for kids and all sorts going on throughout the year. Um, I don't think it needs much to actually get get something done. You know, if you wanted to do a pageant, as soon as you say, "Oh, let's do a pageant," people will go, "Oh, that's a bad idea." People, go, "Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do." <laughs> it doesn't even need to be a celebration. The Philippines is a bit like that. You know, there's always time for a party. You know. <laughs> It doesn't matter what else is going on. Yeah, let's have that. And from the costume side, there is a lot of people really into it, really good at making costumes and stuff. Um, I know several costume and suit makers that they're predominantly in the pageant industry. They'll do things like the, um, what do you call it, the, the school proms and things like that, but... Their their best stuff is normally in the pageants. That's where they like to do their showpiece because it's a big promotion thing. If you look up Queen of Cebu, for example, it's a transgender pageant and it's huge. I mean, the, there's a lot of money in it. Um, I covered it for a Norwegian magazine before and it was literally taking the biggest hole at the um, waterfront hotel and it was full I mean you couldn't get any more people in there and the tickets weren't cheap um, but there was a lot of money in the presentation there was a lot of big acts you know from TV and stuff that actually come down there to do singing and all sorts major event so pageants are just huge do I understand it the answer is no I don't get it but hey ho you know if it makes people happy that's the important thing